Bologna is in northern Italy, and it's the historic capital of the Emilia-Romagna region, which is shown in red. When I approach Bologna, I always look forward to two things, seeing San Luca on the hilltop and seeing my friend and reenactor Federico Marangoni. San Luca has been the symbol of Bologna as well as a place of religious worship for centuries. It is sited atop a forested hill above the city. You can take a bus or drive, but I suggest the covered walkway that leads to it. Portico di San Luca. You can still use it the same way as pilgrims since the 15th century have done. The portico is the longest in the world, and there's a cafe near the sanctuary so you can have a bite to eat once you get up there. After I finished at San Luca, I went to visit Federico and his family. He has a great collection of extant documents and books from the time periods we both study, and I always learn something new. It's also cool to handle books and papers from the past. Federico's wife made a delicious dinner. First, passatelli in brodo, then zucchini ripiene con polpette. Paired with wine and great conversation, it was the perfect evening. We could also see San Luca on the hilltop shining brightly. The next day, I headed down the Via Emilia towards the Adriatic Sea. I wanted to visit a friend in Bagnara and see the Rocca there because it is known as the Rocca di Caterina Sforza. <laughs> First stop was to see Ale's class of students learning English. Then we passed a bar named after me on our way back to her place to pour over her books on Caterina. Alessia and I then visited the Rocca di Bagnara. She gave me a tour in English. The Rocca houses the Museum of Bagnara, which was granted by Pope Sixtus IV to Caterina and her husband. They oversaw the restoration and modernization of the fortress, and the city walls, primitive structures, and construction of the keep date back to all of the developments arranged by them. We finished up and popped over to Forlempopoli to visit the Rocca there and see some reenactment friends. In town, we tracked down that book on Caterina, and then I learned a couple new phrases in Romanian dialect. And I got to practice saying, basta, cho. We had dinner at a trattoria in Faenza, and the next day we headed to Ravenna. First stop was the Basilica of San Vitale. Built in 547, this basilica houses mosaics from Christian Byzantium. The Mausoleum of Gala Placidia is in a small building just outside of San Vitale, with a tiny door. Once you enter, you're greeted with beautiful mosaic ceilings. Everywhere you look in this tiny place of rest, there are delicate, intricate, and glimmering mosaics, lit only by what light can enter via the alabaster windows. The basilica and mausoleum are at the top of my list. We headed for a quick espresso and then walked to the Neonian Baptistery. The Neonian Baptistry was probably an old Roman bath that was transformed into the baptistry by bis bishops Ursus and Neon in the 5th century. The Chapel of Andrew is the smallest of the famous mosaic sites of the city. It's the private oratory of bishops dating from the turn of the 6th century, and the only one to have survived to present day. Because it was 
time for lunch, we went for Piedina. This is a specialty in Romagna, so if you're there, you have to have one. It was a beautiful day to be walking around in Ravenna. Our last stop was Santa Palinare Nuovo. It's a Palatine church built by the Ostrogothic King Theodoric in 505. Stunning mosaics and beautiful columns topped with Byzantine capitals. Grazie mille to Ale, Vlad, and Tonini for showing me around Romania. I left Romania with a heart full of joy and a head full of wonderful memories.